Hello everyone, my name is Hubert and welcome to Teach Me channel. Today we will be looking at GCSE Maths changing ratios. This is the final video on GCSE Maths ratios that I'll be doing. So hopefully after this video I have covered everything. Now, there are two things we need to cover. Basically we will be talking about um, how to deal with changing ratios, how to calculate changing ratios and things like that. And here the best way to approach this, I think, is to approach it by doing questions, by examples, and I will explain everything along the way. So we have one simple example and then one more complex example. Without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing we need to learn is how to find new ratios based on old ratios and some information, additional information. So here's a question. There are 10 watermelons in a truck and there are apples as well. And the ratio of watermelons to apples is 5 to 9. Now, two apples fall out. So what is the new ratio? So first of all, we need to find the original number of apples. Now this is this can be very quickly done. This can be very quickly done using the scaling up method that I showed in the last video. So if you don't know what scaling up is, check out my last video on the channel. It's also a ratios video. But here I'm going to show you the proper textbook method how to do this. So the proper textbook method because that will work in every case. Scaling up may be inconvenient in some cases, whereas this method is going to work every single time. So I'm going to show you. So first of all, we have 5 to 9 ratio and we have 10 watermelons. So we have 10 watermelons and that forms 5 parts. So 10 forms 5 parts. So now we need to find one part. So we would do it very similar as in proportional division, but here, because we only know this side, 10 and 5, we only know this side of the ratio, we only use this side of a ratio to work out all the parts. So we need to divide 10 by 5, 10 watermelons by 5 parts to find out what is one part. So 10 divided by 5 is equal to 2. So one part is equal to 2 watermelons. So now we know that one part in this whole ratio, one part is equal to 2 watermelons or 2 apples. Because it's a ratio. So one part here is the same as one part here. It's just watermelons on this side, apples on this side. Okay. So now the last thing we need to do is multiply out the apples to find out how many apples there were to begin with. So 9 times 2, 9 parts and 2 in each part, so that's 18 apples. So now we know that there were 10 watermelons and 18 apples. Now we also know that two apples fell out. So new ratio is 10 watermelons to 16 apples. Because watermelons stay and two apples fell out. So that's our answer. That's the new ratio. However, we need to simplify it. And the simplest form of it would be if we divide both sides by 2. Let's try that. So we have 5 here. And here we have 8. And that's our final, final answer. So as you can see, that's the proper way of doing this. That's the proper textbook way of doing this. Now, if you wanted to find the, the original ratio of 10 to 18, you could have done that by scaling up. Because we know that 5 parts and 10 watermelons, so we multiply this side by 2 and we multiply this side by 2 and done. 
But this method will work every time, which is why I chose to show this method as opposed to scaling up, with some, which sometimes may actually be inconvenient. Okay, so that's how we deal with finding new changing ratio, new changed ratios. Now, this was fairly simple. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you is slightly more complex. Because... Uh, it's quite more complex because uh, we're going to use the new ratio to find out the actual original amount of the people in this case. And don't worry, I will explain it. Uh, bear with me. If you, if It's quite complex, so if you need to repeat certain things, don't be afraid to go back in the video and sort of go over it again. Because this is quite complex and I will explain it, so bear with me. Okay, so here's a question in front of us. Ratio of male to female students is 5 to 3. But if you add 4 male and 9 female teachers, male to female ratio in a class is 4 to 3. How many female pupils? So we know how many male and female teachers we have. We know what's the ratio of pupils and we know what's the total ratio in the entire class the new ratio. However, we don't know how many people we have, which is why this will make it quite complex. Because we know how many we're adding, but it's just so indirect. We don't know how many people we have. But don't worry, let's, let's try to figure it out. So, Let's write down first thing in, in these complex, in this complex uh, situations. I always like to put down some sort of sensible equations and then sort of work from there. So let's see what we know. Well, we know, we know that in here, the ratio of male pupils, and we're going to call male pupils M, and the ratio of male pupils to female pupils, to female students, who we're going to call F, is 5 to 3. Now, how can we express the whole ratio? How can we express the, express the total male to female ratio with teachers added? How can we express that? Well, it is pu male pupils plus male teachers, right? And it is female pupils plus female teachers. And that is equal to 4 to 3. So that's how it's going to work. So M plus 4 because male pupils plus four male teachers, and that's the ratio to F plus nine, because that's all female pupils plus nine female teachers, and that is equal to four, three. So those are our sort of rudimentary equations, but the problem we have right now is what, what can we do with equations in such a form? Well, it's very difficult to deal with these equations because, because they are in ratios and the, the, we don't know the rules of, sort of rearranging all that stuff. So what I suggest is convert these to kind of these fractions. So we know that males are five parts, females are three parts. So... In that, in the same way, males are five parts, females are three parts. So in that way, males divided by females would be five divided by three. Okay, and likewise, we're going to do the same here. So uh, male students plus four male teachers and female students plus nine uh, female teachers are in a ratio of 4 to 3. So we're going to do the same thing. All of these guys are form 4 parts and all of these ladies form 3 parts. So M plus 4 divided by F plus 9 is equal to 4 divided by 3. Now, what we need to do next what we need to do next is we need to figure out, we need to figure out 
uh, two equations that we can put together because basically what we're trying to do here is we're trying to make these into simultaneous equations and then essentially solve those simultaneous equations. That's our big game plan here. But what we need to do is we need to have males on one side of an equation and females on the other side of the equation in both of these cases. How are we going to achieve this? Well, we are going to simply rearrange these. So here we're going to First of all, we're going to get rid of this. So we're going to multiply by 3, both sides. I'm just going to put down here, but that means both sides. We're multiplying both sides by 3. So now we have 3m divided by f, and that is equal to 5. Now we want that f on the other side, because like I said, we want to split m's and f's. So here, we are simply going to multiply by f. And what do we end up with? We end up with 3m, which is equal to 5f. And that's very important. That's a big step we took here. And we need to do similar here. That's one part of our simultaneous uh, equation that we're going to be working with. But now we need to find the other part of the simultaneous equation that we're going to use. So same situation here. We want to split the m's from the f's. Here we... We have a slightly more complex situation, but we are going to deal with it. So what we're going to do is the same. We're going to multiply both sides by 3. So now we have 3m because we're multiplying the top. 3m plus 12 because we're multiplying the top by 3, right? The denominator. And that is equal to 4. And now... We're just going to multiply this side out, very similar to here. But we're just going to multiply that whole thing. So we're multiplying by f plus 9. So we're multiplying by that whole thing. So now we have... So here we have f plus 9, my bad. There. Okay. So now we're going to have 3m plus 12, which is equal to... Well, we're multiplying that 4 by all of this. So... 4 times f is 4f, and 4 times 9 is 36. Okay, so these are the two equations that we're going to use to solve a simultaneous equation. So let's move over here and let's write them down. So 3m is equal to 5f. And now we form two simultaneous equations. Our second simul simultaneous equation is 3m plus 12, which is equal to 4f plus 36. And in this case, we are going to do it very simply, like I taught in another video, by a process of elimination. So we are going to take out the m's because they're, they're both 3 here. So for the sake of simplicity, we are just going, going to eliminate their m's by subtracting their equations. So we subtract everything uh, from here to uh, from, from there. So what do we end up with? Well, 3 minus 3 is, uh, you know, cancelled out. And then we have minus 12 because we're taking that out. So here we have minus 12. And on this side, we have 5f minus 4f. So, in that case, we have 1f. And here we have, you know, nothing, minus 36. So, in that case, here we have 1f minus 36. So, we're getting there. We have, we have eliminated the m's. So we only have one unknown. We have only the f's left. And we only have one f. So, that makes it actually simpler because we won't have to sort of divide through at the end. So, we have minus 12, which is equal to 1f minus 36. What do we do next? Well, what we do next is we just rearrange it to isolate the 1f on one side. So, what we're going to do is we can, because that's minus 36, we are going to add 36 on both sides. So, now we have minus 12 plus 36, which is 24. And here we have... 
one F. So here we have F. So that's our answer. There were 24 female pupils. There were 24 female pupils. And that's how we arrived at this. Now, I do realize it's complex. As you can see, as you can see, when you ha are given the two new ratios, and then you have some additions, but you don't have sort of direct amounts of the people in the original ratio, then you may you you may actually get some clues that this is what you have to do. That's how you can tell that this is what you have to do. Now, so I will go over what we did very quickly. So we wrote down equations of what our original ratio looks like and what's the sort of basic equation for our new ratio, whatever it may be. Then we, because it's difficult to deal with sort of equations in the ratio forms, we just converted it to sort of these fractions. We divided, we divided one by the other to give us these equations. Then we tried to do two simultaneous equations. So what we tried to do is putting M's on one side and F's on the other side by a simple algebraic rearranging. That's all we did. So this is all rearranging to give us those two simultaneous equations. And then once we have those two simultaneous equations, we just solve them. That's all we do. We just solve the simultaneous equations to give us the answer we need. And we usually, in these cases, usually you will do it by a process of elimination. So you don't need to worry about quadratics and things like that. Usually that will be good enough. So this is it for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate when you guys watch my videos. If you want to stay up to date on daily math, science and biomedical science videos, hit that subscribe button below. And if you like this video, give me a big thumbs up. And if you have any questions, ask me in comments. I'm more than happy to answer. I do realize this may get confusing, so I am here to help you guys. Thank you again and see you next time.